What is up, guys? Uh, hold on. What's up, guys? It's your boy, GRC. We're coming at you live every single day at 11 a.m. Eastern. And today we have a really special one. Me and Sam have been talking about the centralization of Ethereum proof of stake for a few days now. And I've asked every thought leader <laughs> that I can. And frankly, the answers are, uh, we're not sure what's going to happen. I hope our bags pump. Pretty much. Everyone just wants pump action. We have a lot of things going. Chia is what we're talking about today. And I think it's got a lot of things going for it. And I think it might be one of those things that wins by survival <laughs> because other things might centralize themselves. But these things can take years to play out. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the intro to Chia. We have Crypto Curricula, Accept Cookies, Hex Orca, whatever you want to call him, you call him. But he's on the show with Sam Stoltz. Sam has reviewed the white paper. We want to move away from centralization. And I know it's not a sexy topic, but I don't really give a shit. <laughs> it's the truth. All right. You already know what time it is. Crypt in the morning. Crypt in the morning. Crypt in the morning. Waiting on phone. Crypt in the morning. 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 Waiting on phone. Crypt in the morning. 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 Crypt in
uh, get on the exciting train that has the most promise. So a lot of times Bitcoin has carried the brand name in crypto as sort of the introduction. We know it's not a scam. It's had the best performance on the chart. It has the most time in the market. It's been highly liquid and traded in you know almost every country around the world. So there's a lot of bow to confidence there and a big community. Hey, However, well, Orca, so, yeah. sorry, um, you're every like maybe 10 seconds, your audio cuts out for like one full second. Uh, really? Do you think it's just lagging a little bit? He's probably just lagging a little bit. Might just be. Um, I could hear you pretty good. But yeah, I, I noticed it too. Okay, it, it did. It did happen. Well, I'm, I'm gonna try to get people try to intro what my how I think about what she is as a, a a thing that people might be able to relate to. So, like, from I read the white paper. I don't own any, but I think it's fascinating. Where proof of work, you have a computer. That computer processes transactions and keeps the network secure. Another way to think about the mining on Bitcoin is like you're basically paying to put your shit on the blockchain. You know, that's how I describe it to some people. You, you, you pay like to send mail with USPS, right? You're paying on a blockchain to send your shit to the cloud effectively, right? Well, on proof sure. of state, you're doing this, but instead of having... Uh, me paying Orca or me paying GRC or me paying somebody else with proof of stake, you pay all the people that already have the money effectively, right? And so it becomes more and more centralized and the security, at least we were positioned right now, has been decreased, right? Where Chia, instead of using processing transactions like a miner where anybody can do it, or instead of having, you have to have a lot of money to do it on proof of stake, Chia has something, and please correct me, you mm -hmm. have proof of space or like, you need to have a hard drive and I need to have uh, memory on that hard drive in order to be on the blockchain. So take it from there, like whatever I missed in there or like expand upon it from yeah, there. Yeah, that was a really great explanation. The consensus mechanism of Chia is called the proof of space and time. Proof of space is exactly what you alluded to with hard drives. <clears throat> Rather than these expensive ASIC miners, the Chia network full nodes are comprised of storage space. So you could use a, a hard drive disk, you, you could use a solid state drive, and you're essentially the more space you commit to the network, that's your hash rate in Bitcoin, your security function. It's the proof of work um, that you're committing to ensure that you are an honest node in the network. But the the real proof of work inside of Chia is in the hard drives and, and why we're using this technology, because <clears throat> Chia pre presents an opportunity for a far more decentralized blockchain, uh, nodes that are very efficient, anybody can run them on very standard computing equipment, low barrier to entry as far as costs go. Scalability is uh, very attainable and even fits into currently existing enterprise solutions of corporations. And then you have just the difference of how the mechanism of consensus works rather than constantly hashing, constantly spending energy to battle for the award and to validate a block. You just do some hard labor up front and then you yield the benefit of that labor for a long time to come. So in Chia, we plot our hard drives. If you imagine a hard drive, right, it's your little disk, it's about, you know, a little thicker than a phone, full of storage space, you're going to fill that with cryptographic hashes. It's like nonsense to you and I, it just looks like the random letters and numbers of, of the transaction hashes that we have in Ethereum, right, when you go on Etherscan. Well, it's filling up all of the storage space with tables that are formatted with specific hash data that will be checked for later when blocks are being established and transactions are being validated. And the reason that that's important is because in order to fill up the hard drive, your computer has to actually go to work and it has to start kind of printing or like burning that data onto the hard drives, which can always be wiped empty clean and even like resold on the secondary market later. But in that meantime, when you're plotting your hard drives, it is going to use compute power and you'll begin filling up that storage space. Then 
every roughly 10 seconds on average, same as like uh, Bitcoin, a uh, block is going 10 to- 10 seconds or 10 minutes? I'm sorry, every 10 minutes, uh, going to be selected as an opportunity to um, you know, publish transactions to the blockchain. These are called transaction blocks. They are actually more significant than these intermediary blocks that we have, which do actually improve the throughput. It's higher throughput than uh, BTC. And you're saving energy because you're only really burning uh, the computer the one time that you fill up the hard drive. Once it's full, it acts as like a bingo card. And the consensus mechanism is a randomly selecting search puzzle that is trying to find a specific result on a bingo card. And if your hard drive holds that hash information, that you know square on the bingo card, then you win and you can validate that next block, earn the rewards, and continue the uh, building of the chain into a longer and heavier chain is, is it is it um similar to btc mining where you can you join a pool or is this something sure. more so like hnt right helium uh i think it's helium where yeah right? it, it's kind of both really um it's very similar to btc in the sense that uh there is the ability to pool the consensus power it's actually an improvement over the BTC model in which the pool signs the block. In Chia, even though you are receiving the aggregate benefit of being in a large group of people that are all pooling their uh, space together to try to win blocks and to have the bingo card that's going to get called, you actually still, if your hard drive has the bingo square that wins the block, you actually sign it from your individual node. It's every individual farmer within in the pool, the farming pool, is acting independently, but the math aggregates the rewards appropriately to the proportion of space that you're providing to the network, right? Sure. Everyone's contributing a percentage and that's their odds of- And, and uh, Sam, I could just read the section from the FAQ to you. It might clear something up. This is exact. So it says farming requires nodes to locally store large files called plots. These consist of random data and are at the heart of Chia's proof of space consensus mechanism. These plots are used to solve a challenge similar to how proof of work requires miners to do computational work. These functions, they function as the lottery ticket to the block reward for the solving the puzzle. The more space nodes provide on their computer, the higher the chance they win the block. And I'll just read this next, this last part and I'll just finish it off. Time Lord nodes have a special function as they broadcast proofs of time every nine seconds. Time Lord nodes are informed when unfinished blocks are submitted to the network and will then work on a proof of time using a verifiable delay function, FDF, VDF, put differently, they announce the winning nodes. If a farmer wins the lottery drawing, they can process the highest paying transactions from the mempool into a new block and broadcast this to the network. This ensures correct documentation of time and allows the Chia network to process more transactions per second than POW blockchains like Ethereum. Where does where nodes have to constantly synchronize to the state of the blockchain? Chia thus combined the security of POW blockchains with the performance and energy of the POS blockchains. So um, the, thank you for pulling that up. Um, as he was reading through that and putting together what you were saying, when your proof of work, say with Bitcoin, I have a miner and it's solving a problem, right? And it solves the problem and then it puts that out. If I'm understanding correctly, it could be wrong, please correct me. Uh, so it's solving this problem, right? And it's trying to get that lottery ticket to get the block to in Bitcoin effectively, right? Where this is almost preloading all of the lottery tickets and then it's just like, here's the lottery ticket. And then it's like, which pool is this lottery ticket in? <clears throat> because a hash rate or like a hash function or hash, whatever it's called, it's just a long string of gobbledygook that we don't understand. Each piece of means something. And it's just looking for this on this giant, you know, database of, of space out there. How does the time piece play into this? Because well, the BDL you, or whatever. Yeah, they're, they are their own nodes and they're actually used for literal, like geographical as well as theoretical 
space. You're you're talking about a decentralized network that's competing to become first in line to win a race and they get the next block. And so that variable delay function is a piece of math that is trying to avoid collisions of um, nodes signing a block at the same time and to establish who actually has precedent and wins the actual block. So it's whichever node, all three of us are a node and then there's some you know, this Time Lord node out here, we're all in different parts of the world and we all find the answer to the puzzle at the same time and we all send the answer to the chain. The first Time Lord that picks up that correct puzzle will timestamp and validate with that hash and that will determine the singular winner of the puzzle. So say, uh, to relate it back to the lottery analogy, um, we all, there's a global like, lottery, let's say, and mm -hmm. I have a winning ticket, but you also have a winning ticket and GRC has a winning ticket. And uh, the first person that goes through and like, hey, I put mine into the system before you uh, gets all of the reward instead of yes. it being split. Okay. And that happened every in, But in a pool, you're, you're going to be set up with rules that are profit sharing, right? In nature, you're every block that's won by the pool, you're going to earn a small amount of fee for participating and being a part of that net space. Um, but as far as the literal node that gets the signature, it is all or nothing. Either you signed the block or a different node signed that block. Um, and that's where in the case of the pools they'll often do a reward where the node that actually leaves the signature gets disproportionately more of the reward and the pool gets the rest of whatever is the remainder from that cut and so in that way you do actually have the ability to get like all the benefits of increased exposure by joining the net space that everyone else is providing and still really reaping reward because you're not fully diluted in the case that the amount of net space you're providing are your odds of whether or not you get to win the next block. And if you do, despite being one tiny provider in a massive pool, you still get the proportion, the majority of those rewards in that block. So um, other than that, you're just earning a small fractionary reward because you're in a pool that happens to win blocks far more often than a single farmer that has very little space committed to the network or like hash rate committed to Bitcoin. So question um, tactically, and then I wanted to talk about this on the macro level a little bit, but why is the VDL uh, or whatever it was, VDL. VDR, um, why is that every nine seconds, but only a block is happening every 10 minutes? Well, the transaction, there are blocks that are happening 10 seconds. There's one validation block or transaction block. I think it's actually referred to that happens every 10 minutes. So it is higher throughput. You are getting real blocks, but the the signage blocks that occur uh, more slowly, and I might be wrong about 10 minutes. It might be every three blocks. It could be something weird. I'm kind of on like empty brain mode right now. Um, but it's that's going out because there are real intermittent blocks that are being filled with transactions. But the real benefit of having these time lords is that there will come a time, there have been times, there currently are times where blocks aren't full. And so you want to still be able to validate transactions and not be stalled. You don't want the chain to not be executing the consensus. So you'd rather just continue signing blocks, even if they're not really full of much, um, because at least you're maintaining a consistent growth and weight to the chain. Well, if we are all committing or we're all publishing transactions uh, to fill a block, then in the case that a block isn't going to be filled or there's multiple empty blocks that are coming to the chain. As long as we just know the order in which they came, we can still order the transactions by uh, value, highest to lowest, and push through in that order, which is the agreed upon consensus model. And then that way, you're going to continue to have the security, you're going to have throughput, and you're not going to risk like a ghost chain event. So that's why I, I want to get into that eventually, but I have more questions about this, is the you said sometimes there's blocks that go through that don't have transactions, right? So uh, from my understanding- That aren't full of them. That aren't full of them. Right, so you, for people who aren't aware of this or basically me to paraphrase and make sure that I, my understanding is correct, that's why I'm doing this, is so you have this block, right? And in this, this cup here, this sparkling yep. water, I can hold 12 ounces of liquid inside of here and it leaves this much space at the top of it, which you can call the MV, the, EVM, you know, the, the profit that you can pull out as a miner, so to speak. Well, 
in, in here, in the Chia network, there might only be this many transactions at a specific time in existence, and it's not completely full in that space. That, I think, is, is that the issue? Because you would see this as being like, like value. Well, it's an issue that exists in all blockchains. Like Bitcoin doesn't always have full blocks. Ethereum doesn't always have full blocks. It's very uncommon yeah, for really. Ethereum to not have full blocks. But it, there were there were times that Ethereum didn't have full blocks. Um, and like Ethereum proof of work certainly doesn't have full blocks. Uh, Fair Ethereum doesn't have full blocks. And yet the consensus mechanism they're using doesn't necessarily, it's not optimized to exist in an environment of uh, continued partial blocks it's just it's designed with the anticipation that commitment of hash power is in some way correlated with the amount of activity that people want to actually use that given network for but in the case of a new launching chain that doesn't necessarily have the network effect of, or a sustainable marketplace of buyers and sellers you might have a disproportionate representation of hash rate committing the proof of work and wow, how secure is this network? And there's nobody in there shopping or doing any business or moving any coin. And so in that case, that's not a more secure chain. That's a very centralized chain. You're, you're going to be the first schmuck to walk into the casino and just hope that they give you the money that you're owed if you hit the jackpot or whatever. So in that case, the, the ability to account for not always full blocks and still maintain a understanding of the order of the transactions and the value of those transactions is a, it's a more secure and more efficient means of maintaining a more consistent mechanism. of well, so, so the security, right? So with say Ethereum, the, the blockchain that everybody's heard of uh, that like, mm -hmm. you know, after Bitcoin type thing that has, well, last time we checked six, seven, eight months ago or something, it was like 5,000 nodes on the network. Uh, and one of the issues with that is that there's so much value, be in my opinion, and I think that Chia potentially solves this, uh, is that people want an economic incentive to do things. And the, the way that that Ethereum was designed, it's not, it doesn't have an incentive to run. There's another, there's another network. I don't remember the name of it, but it starts, I think it was the K and they have, they figured out the alignment of economic incentives. So miners, as well as uh, nodes, get a reward so that you increase the decentralization of the yeah. network. Can you talk about that stuff with Chia? Like, how did the nodes work? Because you have the you have a time node and mm -hmm. uh, the node, but also kind of miner type nodes. Yeah. You got it. So we'll separate those two, right? You have the Time Lord node, and then you have your, we'll call it like the full node. Um, Time Lord nodes cannot earn any reward. There's no financial incentive to run them. They're also virtually free to run, extremely low overhead. If you're running a full node, you're already dealing with a sunk cost great enough to shoulder the unintended consequence of a redundancy Time Lord. There's already Time Lords in the network. And she is also partnering with a company. I, I can't recall the name off the top of my head. Like I said, I'm kind of foggy, but they're creating an ASIC time Lord that's going to optimize the efficiency of time Lord functions to such an extreme that it's like, you know, three of them anywhere on earth would achieve the same amount of decentralization as a million everywhere on earth. So, um, but of course there'll be thousands because the redundancy is nice. It's nice to always just add security. And in the case of the reward incentive for farming in Chia. So this is a little funny, like, why does he keep saying farming? In Bitcoin, you mine Bitcoin. The reason that it's called mining is to imply the very heavy intensive or energy intensive work to secure the network. And in Chia, they call it farming because just like Sam said earlier, where you're sort of putting the work in up front and then it's paying you dividends in the future, it's like farming. You're planting your seeds, you're doing all that work, you're you know, toiling the soil, and then you're going to have the harvest. And the idea is that the proof of work happens up front and then that's sufficient and sustaining that uh, containment of your proof of work is just as valuable as continually doing work itself um, is sort of another way of looking at it. The incentives, as far as the blocks go, there is liquidity, there, there is a real price. Uh, you can, there are calculators that you can figure out how much net space you either can already 
buy it or if heaven forbid you want to go out and like buy a ton of hard drives i i think chia really does show you the path to recycling and like reusing and secondary marketplace um a, a, a secret link you know the alpha link that you guys need and and everyone should be aware of is chialinks.com and that is a website that aggregates it's pretty much every useful and trusted domain and tool within the the chia network universe it'll have your um, NFT platforms, whatever the DEX platforms may be, whatever uh, the best rig setups might be for like money efficient, uh, Chia farming, all sorts of stuff you can find on there. And okay. go ahead. So, so Chia, thank you. This is super interesting. I just pulled up the site. Okay, so Chia is 33 bucks right now, roughly. Mm -hmm. um, how one thing that people want is they want to, there's so many people that just are like, don't have a lot of money. They want more money. Like, and that's just a, a big issue with so many people in America and around the world because of like the monetary system and like plenty of other reasons, but uh, people want to know, and, and it's very easy to grasp being able to take something that like you get and, and, and this thing just generates you money, right? Versus like the sure. divide from legacy to crypto. Like sometimes it takes a while to like get over here, right? Yeah. But like, hey, you get this miner and it generates income is, is a much easier conceptual thing for a lot sure. of people to grasp. What are we talking about from like a return? I know it varies, all that shit. Right? I got you. But like, I got you. can you talk about that piece a little bit? Yeah, I think a better tool than me giving you, as as you know, and as you alluded to, there's the speculative nature. Chia's price can go up and down. Cost of a hard drive can go up and down, sure. I think a maybe a simpler way for us to grasp what am I going to spend and what can I potentially earn? There is a, a company that is producing what's called the Evergreen Miner. And it's kind of nice because if you are... This isn't our absolute cheapest approach, but if you are someone who would like a little convenience... It's a, it's a way that you can not break the bank, be in it for the long haul, and the ROI does make sense uh, to just plug this thing in. It's preloaded with the plots. You don't have to be the person that does the proof of work. It's already done. It's in a file. There's no way anyone can like s remotely steal your files from you, nothing goofy like that. And you basically just plug it into a USB port, allow the full node client that's running on your computer or laptop to access the internet and you're validating the network and earning uh, block rewards over time, right? It's, because it's a chance. I would say put yourself into a pool and then that way it's kind of like earning a daily dividend or well, not daily. It's whenever you reach 0 0.01 XCH is usually when they'll send you the emission. Uh, you can throttle that up or down, uh, but that's, you just think about like gas efficiency the same way you do on Ethereum. Like how often do you really want to be clogging up shit and well, that, uh, that happens in the real life i have affiliates uh for other like in fitness type stuff that i do and yeah you could literally you guys could literally start the crypto in the morning chia farm and get with a couple of people in the community to start your own pool your own nft uh pool and then people on the show if they want to run a note at home and maybe they got like a old uh western digital two terabyte removable hard drive that they kind of forgot about fucking load that thing up with some plots you're farming chia with the gang in the morning and like it's all the time but it's really efficient it's it's not and i think it's it's good timing that we talk about this sam's been talking about proof of work options for a few days now constantly so have i talking about how we want proof of work back talking about how we want some sort of well here's how you get it man i i totally i'm totally with you the here's how you get it and no one wants to talk about it because all of a sudden we all become friends again instead of being max maxis in our tribes but like the same way that bitcoin became infinitely more valuable when it was able to be wrapped and brought onto ethereum and you can use it in DeFi, it's just got way more utility you could argue that it provides a secondary layer of decentralization away from the mining network itself and it does truly bring to light that these are all just socially enforced uh consensus mechanisms as well as social contracts the price is what you and i agree to exchange it for and that's where Chia has the opportunity to interrope these other chains and use truly trustless bridges to get their assets onto a truly decentralized proof of work efficient network. And then that way you can still have your funny business proof of stake chains and you can maintain your funny business proof of stake consensus and that's fine, but your assets exist virtually everywhere, right? We're on this multi-chain universe. So can you, can you talk about this, right? From the standpoint, like there's a boatload of different networks out there and most of them don't have much activity on them. 
and the, the everybody's like paying attention to Ethereum, right? But the interoper interoperability uh, is like when that, I think that might get solved in 2023 to a great, like a big step forward, not like permanent. Big step. But like, big step. What'd you say? Big step. I'm with that. Big step. Like it needs to be solved because once interoperability sol is solved to like a big, like, like how Uniswap came out, right? That was mm -hmm. uh, incredible. There was like, holy, we have a path forward, right? Once that happens with like trustless bridges in a way that yep. allows people to move much more easily at a lower cost, holy shit, that's going to be massive. But how does Chia, like, how is that going to differentiate itself or be, you, you mentioned NFTs uh, and there's a DEX or something out there, but like, how do you get the users on there? Because it's like, if blocks yeah. are not filled, like, how do you get more people on there? Or like, how is that playing out? Is there development happening? All that shit. So you nailed it. You know why Ethereum's popular? It was the first DeFi. Um, but like Bitcoin would have blown it away if they developed on-chain smart contracts and, uh, you know, fungibility of smart tokens and stuff like that. But um, we're, we only use Ethereum because we all showed up and started using Ethereum. And it, that's just where the market showed up. And then it's really hard to move that somewhere else unless there's such a significant like savings or quality improvement, right? And so with chia they you know bram cohen the founder and gene hoffman who is now on board as the coo they've been focusing with the ends in mind from the beginning and the development began in 2017. so they were working on their justification for the business model effectively and from the beginning focused on the real world the world of business the world of highly regulated very uh useful products and services and where are the efficiencies in these people's operations where does blockchain technology really fit and make sense and what they identified and with their relationships and now where partnerships are forming and and really building out like the you you won't know what's happening until it's already kind of blown by you is a trustless carbon credit market that has multiple governments and multiple international banking institutions on board as utilizing the chia networks technology as their public uh, marketplace for the exchange of tokenized carbon credits that they believe they can now truly authenticate the validity and quality of these carbon credits and quantify their liquid market value in exchange. They believe that there's enough demand there given the partnerships. This is now live, literally as of like within the last couple of weeks has now gone live. Uh, and for the last year, year or two has been going through kind of like the test phases, three test phases. So this is like actually happening. And this isn't your buddy down the street that like smokes cigarette butts out of the garbage can. These are like, you know, real governmental institutions, real banking institutions. Uh, there's partnerships with global powerhouses in the digital storage industry, as well as in the, I believe, and don't quote me on this, we can all go Google it after, but it's fun to say, so I'm going to say it anyway. I believe Chia Network's like corporate office is right next door to the SEC's office. Like they, they are not interested in how many DGENs can we get in here and flip a bunch of monkey pictures. What they would like to do is solve real world problems. And in order to do that, they're building out highly useful primitives that developers are able to come and build useful tools on. Um, it's not as sexy as having a lot of you know, standards already, the Ethereum 721 standard for your NFTs and all of these really obvious Ponzi-nomics that have been refined over the years on Ethereum of how to sucker people into bad projects and scams. She is not interested in that. She is much more interested in enterprise level solutions. How do you get uh, a world of highly competitive allies to compete for good? And I think the carbon credit market is sort of an obvious narrative that we're seeing, you know, in the political uh, realm where there's all of this attention on climate and your emissions and things like that. Um, but if you think about it from sort of a game theory standpoint, all of these different countries are responsible for their constituents and for their industry and their thriving defense against, you know, potential threats. And we're moving away from high conflict, high casualty based, brutal warfare it obviously still exists 
and I'm not saying that it's going to, it, I'm not making the world peace pitch here, but there is a very interesting conversation to be had about the petrol dollar and how maybe the world would look different if you were pricing things in the quantitative analysis of how to keep the world a nice place with trees and flowers. Like that's sort of an interesting flip of a paradigm and Chia is the, the front runner of expertise in that space. I think, I think you, I think that anybody, the people who um, orchestrate, you know, the global political infrastructure wars, etc., are recognizing that it is a lot cheaper to just manipulate people here than going over pow pow right it's it's far easier right. to steal people's money by just manipulating and it's more productive correct if i want if i want to steal shit from you if i want to take shit from you i can come over there and break your leg or or you know chop your mom's head off and be like yo give me your give your shit or you're the next person yeah. in the family dies or i can just manipulate you here to just give me your your to make you believe that's what you wanted to do all along is to just give me what i wanted to oh do. i know that vibe so well i hate that vibe See, that's and, what everyone that's in crypto does. Vitalik was talking about that, and I don't really believe Vitalik as far as some of – well, let's not even talk about that. But he was mentioning that every, a lot of people are just looking for someone to motivate them. And sure. some guys are very smart with that because they're salesmen and they mm -hmm. have so much life experience. And you can use that for good. I could just be like, hey, I want to be the best and try to be transparent. Or what I could do is – be as charismatic as I possibly could, be emotionally detached completely and use that for the wrong idea, in my opinion. And I think that she is- That's how a lot of the shilling goes. That's why you end up with centralized exchanges and people's money disappearing. Guys, so check this out. Look how skilled your boy is. <laughs> I mean, I did That's this. That's great, dude. I mean, come on. There's cookies, intro to Chia, special guests accept cookies. <sighs> Look at me and Sam, so Arm and Chia, just like that. Like a, <laughs> that looks so good. Dude. I'm like shooting on, on, on video there. Um, so a question. So um, say somebody has uh, five terabytes. Of, okay. Uh, sort of, I, I've got like a, a hard one. I've got like one right here, right? Um, yep. And they're using that to farm. Um, mm -hmm. And I love your analogy there, like – the work today for future rewards. Uh, they're farming with that. Is that like you're going to earn a dollar a month? Is it like? It, it, uh, probably not. If you're doing if you're doing seven terabytes, you probably it, you probably shouldn't expect to win a block if you're solo farming for a decade, maybe fifteen years. Uh, there are some people that are uh, committing petabytes uh, to the that work. There are, again, opportunities for large companies to decommission their memory, uh, which typically they'll throw in the landfill when it's 80% through its projected lifespan. Now you could use the last 20% to farm Chia and maybe that offsets some costs. But you could, on the alternative, take that seven terabytes, go into a pool, and you're going to be earning some fraction of Chia all the time. Just whenever that pool wins blocks, you're only going to be rewarded with your proportion of the network. But here's the cool thing, right, is Chia's 30 bucks, and Bitcoin is proven that it can go higher than 30 bucks. So there's crypto that does great uh, when there is purpose behind it or the market really wants to buy it up. So if you fall into the belief that you don't want to spend money to make money, but you would like some exposure to asymmetric potential returns, then it does make sense, in my opinion, to take that very negligible increase in your electrical bill to fill up seven terabytes with plots and one feel good about yourself for producing a more decentralized blockchain um you know helping the efforts of censorship resistance and you're participating in a pool that's always winning these uh block rewards throughout the day because it's large enough but if you're earning fractions and fraction we call mojos there's satoshis to bitcoin there's mojos to chia well if you have a you know couple hundred mojos to your name and then one day chia is a trillion dollars i guess you did it all right so it's just all about how you want to look at it and i think chia really has done a service to the market by not being sexy by not being a big shill fest on number go up it really has been dev oriented build first ugly trial by fire open source the way it should be done. 
and that has led to some good innovation so far. I'm excited to see what else there is. That can lead to pinch in the to price. Come. Like we see, we see this in a lot of cryptos is the price chart goes down initially and then everyone forgets about it. And the people that really believed in it generally, if they wait long enough, see some pretty darn yep. big rewards because they're like, wow, I waited in a pool of everyone else who got out, right? you 99% of people get out and then you're like talking to your eight buddies and you're all back in the same spot. And then the bull rock market comes and Solana goes from $6 to 194 And so does, yeah. trust me, and, GM moves. And, and this, is a, this is a perfect example of what actual DeFi price charts look like and, and what actual market making looks like. And um, for the first time in a long time, I'm getting to see price discovery in the same phase as the chain developing its core infrastructure. That's, that's, you'd have to go back four or five years. So there's Chia building out like um, the first block, right? The very first supply to come into existence had to be farmed into existence. Now there is a pre-mine, the company Chia Network owns custody of it and they have their own private custody solution, which is actually going to be public open source through and through. They have uh, air gapped offline computers in Faraday cages with their own um, wallet uh, logic that they've written, which allows for clawbacks. It allows for rate limiting, time limiting, um, rekeying of the private keys uh, if signatures come together in a majority thing, rules that you can set in ways that just are not available right now on Ethereum. And with the coin set model of Chia, make a ton of sense. These are the kinds of things when we think about how much activity Ethereum has, guess what? Your, your Fed coin is not going to launch on Ethereum. Like that's, that's not a good network for highly centralized money unless you are also the majority of the consensus. Um, so that would just, could it work through subsidiaries of like exchanges? Sure. But, but that's not really a good secure model. They'd rather go to Chia where, there's real ability for programmable money that is highly extensible and truly decentralized, which overcomes the lesser nature of people that might accidentally one day flip the switch and, and ruin people's lives. Wouldn't it be best if you just began on the network where they could never undo the altruistic start? Would be a, a much safer uh, model. So, so you're. Um, I, I like. I like Chia. Uh, I want to ask um, about the just to remind myself uh, about the wallet and then how to get it. But before I do yeah. that, uh, I think of Chia similar to say Linux uh, versus say Windows or the Mac operating system, where the windows operating system is extremely popular right then you mm -hmm. have the apple operating system which a lot of people also like there but you have linux which is you know could be argued as a much better solution from from a, like a tactical standpoint or like the capability mm -hmm. flexibility like you you name it right on that front um and how i wanted to bring this to chia is like that's kind of it appears at surface level, not diving in as deep as you, but it appears I've read, sure. paper, I've read some stuff on it, that that's kind of like where it's at. How do you think, is it, because Linux is still there, but it's kind of like, you know, that third option, like. Your brain is right on, your brain is right on the right track. And you're even saying things that are hilariously analogous to how Chia currently exists and will continue to develop. You nailed it. Like Linux is the more extensible, highly customizable, less safety rails. You got to just build it from the ground up kind of code. Um, but Windows is probably more popular for users and Mac OS is probably more popular for users. Devs, probably Linux. Chia is written in Lisp and Lisp is highly extensible. One of the first, if not the first full Turing language. And that allows them to build out primitive, they call them primitives, which are effectively the building blocks that can say I'm the master uh, Lisp coder who also knows how to code EVM uh, or, you know, in Python and whatever. I, I come and can take my skills and build a primitive on Chia that allows people who tend to write in the languages that are more uh, commonly found in EVM chains and 
translate effectively where it fits. There will be a debugging process. There will be the exploratory, which variables can't translate to the right counter chains, variables, whatever, but that will, those primitives will eventually build the dev environment that allows people to seamlessly bring these chains together because they're building the same network they were already used to. And it's seamlessly communicating to a chain that, you know, has the length, has the weight and has the true proof of work values in terms of its mechanism of consensus. So it is able, like Linux is still hot if you're a dev. Correct, correct, correct. And, but like, but it's that, it's just like an afterthought to like 99% of the population because they don't understand Linux. And it's not sexy, security. it's not sexy. So how do you see that playing out? Like, is it, because Chia as a, as a macro, we're still so early. Like, obviously this is, sure. don't know what's going to happen, but yeah like you know what i mean can it get download the download the full node client man i promise you're gonna open up chia's full node client that has your wallet it has tokens it has nfts and then it has the node functions which are your full node itself with the blocks the transactions farming which is your harvesting plots that you have and then actual uh, spot for pooling the user interface is so much better than MetaMask. The display is larger, customizable. It's much more user friendly. The there are some hiccups that are a little tricky that even I had hiccups with today, where because of how brilliantly Bram built the math behind the UTXO that Chia uses, the CoinSet model, there your wallet is. You know how like MetaMask, you have your multiple accounts. Well, your wallet is wall wallets inside of wallets. And so in your one wallet, which will be displayed on screen, as far as like, I was looking at all my NFTs. Okay. So I, I thought I was looking at a, a bunch of NFTs. I'm getting ready to do a giveaway tonight with, and I see them in my GUI for Chia. And then I shared my, what I thought was like my public address on Twitter with everybody. And they were like, dude, there's no NFTs in this wallet. And I was like, huh, I'm looking at them right here. And what I had found when I went and I investigated the hash of where these NFTs were sent to, they were sent to addresses that exist within my wallet, but Chia just derives and increments new addresses, new wallets constantly. And you have an infinite number of wallets, but they're all corresponded back through the private keys. Your private keys have the ownership of all of the accessibility to those um, assets. And then you can do now, which is pretty recent in the last month or so, DIDs, digital IDs. So I went into my Chia chat, right? And I'm like, hey guys, I'm trying to show everyone these NFTs. They're saying they don't exist. And they said, well, just make a DID. So what we're going to do and what I'll do after the stream is I'll, I'll make like uh, the cookie jar and that'll be a digital ID where I will assign all of my NFTs to and I'll effectively move them all to that digital ID. And then that's its own wallet as well but it has like its own name, the way that you think of an ENS name, a .eth. It has like its own .xch and I can type what I want it to be called. And then I know that if I share that wallet public address, people can see everything that's right there under that DID. So it's kind of like a nice little uh, filing cabinet system. Does, 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 that, um, does that digital ID type thing, does that type, can people follow a trail back to your wallet? Because it could be, that could be utilized for security as well. Yes, they can they can tie back the DID to the wallet that generated that DID. Um, but not like doxing you, right? Um, however, you could you could just spin up a new private key and a DID and then assign your NFTs from the other full node wallet to that DID. You just send them there. And would but that transaction and there would be no there would be that transaction, but there wouldn't be any prior history of that wallet. So, I mean, it's, there's only so much that you can peel back, right. In terms of Genesis transactions, um, they are coming up with privacy solutions. So that's another thing where you say like, well, how are we, how are you going to get the users? It's like, well, privacy is like number one, first and foremost in Chia. Like we understand decentralization. We understand autonomy and sovereignty and privacy is an inalienable right. So not, just because it doesn't exist yet, it's not that it's not happening. It's absolutely happening. Same with these trustless bridges. It's just a matter of it's got to be built and I'm not building it. So I can't really complain, um, but that is happening. And th those are things like Bram is building uh, a poker client on Chia 
that's like actual trustless gaming as opposed to pseudo random there will be true random and there will be real game and not a dealer it'll just be a program and and, and so, so is that, that is, is that when you say a client built on chia is that uh the same thing as like a uh token built on top of ethereum sure it could be i'm sure that's probably the way it'll look um in chia it's interesting the smart tokens are called cats chia asset token and the cats are issued out of raw xch so it's like xch is copper and erc 20s are pennies that you make out of your raw material and, so, and so unlike that's, that's Ethereum, the chia, can... chia is xch Yes. So you take XCH yes. to basically convert it into uh, uh, into a smart or whatever something. You got it. Yeah, you got something. it. Oh. And so that's where I've had conversations with the Chia community and the Hex community. And it's like, it's interesting because Hex and the inflation model that it does, as far as we've, you know, back of the napkin talked about this, we don't think it would be possible to build it on Chia because Chia would require base XCH coin to create a supply. And you can't just inflate that supply now. You'd have to go and repump the XCH into this new coin. So, so you have to use until, the process all the way. Like you gotta use. You can't like just like Chia is a hard currency. It is a real money that is the actual bid currency, the unit of account to bid on block space to get access to a decentralized so that, network. That right there is so you getting users on. You said a minute ago. But that right there is like, because that's a bottleneck for people, developers, right? Because they want to be able to do something like this without capital cost, but that creates a capital cost. So there are ways around it. There are ways around it. Chia is, so, man, we can just go forever. I love this. Chia has what we call data layer. So imagine you already know what a blockchain is. You guys have already become comfortable with there's nodes, there are participants, and there are transactions with assets. Okay. Well, data layer is sort of taking the idea of a decentralized network and getting all of the benefits of privatized networks. Because what we can do with data layer is privately host databases and commit that data cryptographically to the chain with a singular hash. And that hash promises that the data in the tables are exactly unchanged from what was submitted when that hash was created. So if we were all collaborating on a project and rather than be in Google Sheets and we're all changing numbers on a spreadsheet, we kind of have our own spreadsheet. But now in order to finalize a change, I have to broadcast to the people that are sharing my data layer stream. They subscribe to my broadcasted data. I have to cryptographically offer to them these changes. You two look, review the changes and go, yep, he did exactly what we expected of him we approve these changes. And once all three of us have signed, then a new cryptographic hash hits the chain, which validates that the information that we're all utilizing from that that timestamp is authentic to the data that we had all just agreed upon being accurate. So you could, this is a long way to explain, you could have a privately hosted game, a privately hosted currency, privately hosted economics, and just be committing a small hash back to the blockchain and maybe that's what users really want is your game promises them NFTs that they actually have on Shia. It promises them, you know, a fun in-game experience. And it's really just like EA Sports or Blizzard or some private company with a private server and private game. But all of their assets were built out to be compliant with blockchain and they're able to standardize their assets, even though they're privately hosted, they're tradable via the chain and the only counterparty risk is that this business might go out of business and stop broadcasting or something like that uh and peers in the network can then mirror those private databases to improve the decentralized think BitTorrent because bram cohen the founder of chia founded BitTorrent. <laughs> so you have this decentralized network of people that are reflecting data and copying whatever you broadcasted from your private server that's a singular point of failure so then GRC goes, nope, I'm going to broadcast it too. And you go, yep, I'll copy it too. Now we have three versions of it that are broadcasted and available for other people to join into if we give them permission to subscribe to that data. Ooh, um, that, and so we that, could develop our own shitcoin game or whatever, and then they wouldn't 
then we could inflate it to infinity for the purpose of good economics in the game and not need more Chia to do it. Oh, so that's... But all of our assets are still able to be traded on Chia because maybe they were made out of Chia. It separates um, it in a way. Yeah, and, and you could easily bootstrap liquidity and stuff with games to be able to justify like an initial distribution of real NFTs. And then it's just on players if they want NFT items, they're going to have to go to the market and buy them. So, so, so like there's, there's pros uh, to having uh, a cost, uh, like a tangible cost to, you know, creating you know, a cat or a new token, so to speak, if I'm vernacular correctly. Um, yep. But then there's also the, the, the downside uh, of that piece of it, right? Where it's like, you're going to encourage people to go somewhere else, but then you also- I see them as, I used to think that too, but I actually see it as a net benefit now. And it's not trying to be a Chia Maxi. I actually had to put on my Ethereum hat, my Bitcoin hat, my Pulse Chain hat, my Cosmos hat, and think interoperability here, because there are limitations. And that is a negative at its face value. However, if we think about the benefit of the, Chia is committing to, hey, our thing is hard money. And if it's coming out of Chia, it's going to come out of XEH. And if it's coming out of XEH, it had to get through the consensus. And if it went through the consensus, it had to be DeFi. Okay. And then Ethereum says, well, we're a little less on the DeFi, but it gives us more extensibility with how we can generate assets. And we don't need to have as much hard money in order to generate new money. Well, if we can create trustless bridges, I can have enough liquidity of one chain's assets on another chain and in cross-chain trustless uh, DEXs where there's action and there's enough action that it'll all derive back to something. And I don't think we want to derive back to a proof of stake network that maybe I don't have representation in. I think we'd want it to default back to math. And then even if I inflate hex to infinity, I, I can't inflate Chia to infinity. So there is some scarcity property there, unit of account to be able to tie everything back. So, so I just had a, a, a flash of a vision of the future where the interoperability, instead of how we have bridges, like instead of like driving the Tesla from this side of, of where reality to that side of reality, and then having it not be a Tesla anymore, it's a, it's a wrapped Tesla on the other side of this bridge that I just took to now be an Ethereum from Polygon. Um, if if I have Tesla everywhere I go, right? I drive from Florida to Georgia and then from Georgia to Tennessee or whatever, and I still have Tesla exactly like it is or Hex or mm -hmm. whatever somebody's prerogative is, uh, that, you know, people with, uh, like people who are going to be acting in their own self-interest is probably yep. the appropriate way to say it, are going to go where they believe there's higher security, where they believe there's more decentralization, where they believe their shit's not going to be having taken from them, right? Where you can yep. do that in the form of uh, regulations in a POS network. So yeah, I don't know how far away this is, but because I'm thinking like, how, how does she how does get users, right? So mm -hmm. if there's a hard cost to develop a new token, Mm -hmm. Right. Then you're going to no scammers are going to come over there. But scammers, there are, are banned, so, they're also they, they're not going to they bring in users at the same time. It is it is a beauty that it is less attractive for scammers. And there are grants that you can earn from Chia, because remember, when we discussed Chia Network is also a, a company. Um, Chia is a blockchain and it's fully decentralized. But there is also a private company that's trying to go public that has leadership and budgets and payroll and they have capital set aside for grants for development so if you had a right now we're so early guys that th this isn't 12 year old big and so early this is like uh i guess what holy moly it's 2023 man uh, <laughs> this is uh building out the primitives the very beginning of the roadmap so there's going to be the better future but right now it, you just don't see it when there's enough of the primitive laid out where everybody has an easier development environment, then you're going to see the sexier and more fun DeFi stuff. But right now it's a little more of the infrastructure. Right there. I, I like they just launched the I NFT standards. Are gonna fail. I think some things are going to fail that will make things like this shine more. Like yeah. I, think, I think the failure of others in this case might make people, it's like waking up, right? Like, 
oh, you know, when Andrew Tate starts coming out telling everyone they're in the matrix and stuff, it is kind of like that in crypto too. It's kind of like, yeah. Uh, yeah, the price goes up, but you're supposed to be a good human and care about things that matter long term. Like you, mm-hmm. that is important. Like, yeah, I think every human kind of knows like doing something right, you got to do it from the foundation up. And I think Vitalik, you know, might have made a boo boo. Might have maybe there's there's a lot to be said that maybe he's not a super duper DeFi guy all the time, or he's yeah, super duper like brainwashed from like just liberal westernized world, and he's really smart dev, so yeah. he kind of just goes. I think that happened to like I remember all those guys, all those guys just really take that left edge on on the uh, politics and it, and you could tell they're not the strongest willed humans in the world when it comes to confrontation. So they kind of just want to set it aside and they. Yeah, it doesn't look like a world class kickbox right like andrew tate does um the and i don't give a fuck about andrew tate sorry for swearing on the show I just um, the, uh, because t- the top to your, to your point of waking up bro the you guys are obviously not as like into the nft scene as you are into more of the finance and analytics scene of the crypto but in the nft scene we've been dealing with a lot of like drama is like reality tv and it's talking about on-chain royalties and how these exchanges, uh, OpenSea and stuff, can't enforce on-chain royalties, and these creators aren't getting their pay or whatever. Well, on Chia, you can actually enforce on-chain royalties, and because it's crypto and it's cypherpunk, you can get away from it if you wanted to. Uh, but it would also require peer-to-peer social agreement. So, in some ways, you really haven't gotten away. You've just agreed that you didn't want to pay a royalty uh, when exchanging a couple assets with a friend. Um, but if you were to go to like Dexy, which is a decentralized, uh, let's just talk about that real quick. Dexy, you guys said Uniswap earlier, right? And we all love Uniswap because Uniswap has liquidity. And in Ethereum, based on the account model, all of the coins are belong to the smart contract. And then our private keys may or may not have permission to send some of those coins to wherever we want. So the Chia... UTXO, the unspent transaction output model, coin set model, is different in the sense that if you were to like get hacked in Ethereum, they have your they have all of your coins. But in Chia, they only they have access to whatever individual coin they actually accessed in the hack. Now, private keys again are access to the full account because that's your that's your sovereignty. But as far as like s- smart contract hacking. In Ethereum, if, if any of us could theoretically hack Hex, we are moving all of the Hex. It all belongs to one smart contract. But in Chia, every single coin is its own actual individual coin. And they each have their own ability to be spent one time. And so you would have to individually hack every single coin. You, you might get lucky and be able to hack an entire tail, which is like the code that creates the consistency of the that token being its own smart token maybe that's some crazy hack that you pull off but even then you don't get access to the rest of the wallet um and you don't get access to anyone else on the chain's coins of that tail right you just inside of that one uh privately owned area so the uh, the security is vastly superior you can do things like i can create an oh and this is why i brought that up is offer files offer files that are peer-to-peer agreements that are predestined and when conditions are satisfied execute so, so i have an nft of a penguin and sam has 10 chia he creates an offer file that says i want that specific nft id and i'll give 10 chia and then i just open up the offer file it's like a notepad text file i just open it up in the chia gui and it shows me the conditions of the trade and if i accept it i just accept the offer Chia comes to me, NFT goes to him trustlessly. If there was a fee, he would have had to incorporate the fee on top of the 10XCH that he was sending to me in order for that to on-chain distribute over to the content creator that earns the fee. So what you're describing with Chia, like the, it's just really, really early, but and, and I've only you know started to grasp some of this, but it is almost as a, it's a very versatile, that incorporates security and privacy at a at a at a such a level that fundamental like, primitive you can't really compare it to a lot of other chains because it is so 
like um, this shit you're talking about, you can't do on other places. Like you can't, right? And and that could have a uh, a TAM or like an addressable market that is global. Mm-hmm. Like if we want to do something, because I would assume you could. That's be able to manipulate in such a way where we could create other types of contracts between the three of us, where we can do yep. all sorts of different stuff like business. Exactly. Right. That's why that's why they're built that's why they built the custody solution that they built. Because previously the pre farm, which was like I can't remember the number off the top of my head, but it's a lot. I think it was twenty one million. I think it was equivalent to the total supply of Bitcoin, pre farmed and then held in custody. And that's their skin in the game, right? So they're saying if anyone's going to create a market around this thing, we are obviously the biggest threat to dump it to zero with the biggest vested interest to make it the most thriving future it could possibly have. And in the beginning, they had one, they basically had Gene Hoffman holding the pre farm and just in his wallet, right? Now they have this super custom, p- impenetrable security solution, though that was made so that they could transfer the entire pre farm into because they're basically saying, like, come and get it. It's sitting right here, come and get it. And they know you can't. And that's, that's sort of their their silent dominance is like, how secure are we take all the Bitcoin in the world and put it behind a vault. And then we don't think you can get into our vault. And we think people are already getting into vaults and all of these other places all the time. We're watching hacks happen and exploits happen. And Chia is trying to be difficult to program is like a, a feature in this case, because it's using such an old language that either the old school folk are going to have to pick it up or the new school folk are going to have to learn some old school code and that's useful because it kind of helps weed out the scammers. They're less likely to learn an entire new language to come and build a scam one time. And it makes it highly auditable. Lisp is a very auditable language, very standard list language. And that makes it easy for like when businesses do start to develop actual utilities and use cases, it'll be very easy to audit and identify where, if any exploits do exist. Whereas right now we kind of trust these private companies that are using their own expertise and their own experience in the dev environment, but it's not nearly as decentralized in terms of how many people around the world could efficiently audit it um, in the industry. And so that's another security benefit that I think is you're just not finding that anywhere else. Guys, One intro minute. to Chia. Intro to Chia. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. We'll, 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 ask whatever you got. Ask whatever you got. And then we'll wrap up, but we can do uh, whatever's past we'll intro. We'll do, we'll do a part two on this because this is fa- this is fascinating. Uh, you guys will love it. And honestly, dude, when you download the client, you're going to be like, fuck MetaMask, dude. Well, I'll ask <laughs> you already say F MetaMask. True. We, we don't we, like MetaMask is user UIs. Yeah. They also have, dude, and, and it's nice knowing up front that you have the security because there are open source community wallets. You'll find them on that chialinks.com. There's the Gobi wallet, which is a like a Chrome extension, so it's just like a MetaMask. There's um, Pocket, which is a mobile app that you can download on your Android or iOS, and you can see all of your NFTs there. And um, if you're having that goofy situation I had where it's multiple wallets inside of your wallet holding multiple different NFTs, we'll just move them all to a DID. The DID will be displayed in pocket. You can see all the NFTs there. Um, and there's offline offer files. I could, from the comfort of my own home, say, oh, shit, dude. I owe Sam 100 XCH. But I'm out, I got to get out the door and I don't know if the transaction is going to go through. So I don't want to like start it and then leave and then it fails. And then I'm somewhere I don't have access to my internet or something. So what I do is I create the offer file conditions, save it as a little text file, put it on a thumb drive. I go over and whenever I get to Sam's house, I flip them thumb drive and say, hey, get your uh, offer file off of that real quick. He just drags and drops it onto his Chia GUI, opens it up. He goes, yep, there's my 100 XCH for nothing. I'll accept that offer, take it, boom, he's paid. He can flip me back my hard drive or my thumb drive if he wants. If he keeps it, he keeps it. I don't care. So, so, so that's tremendous from a privacy standpoint. Like that's that's that would I would think, right? Is that am I understanding that correctly? Because it's the hash yes. is showing up on the blockchain, but the the, the the transaction between you and me is not like is that right? So yeah, I mean, there's there's security to it where you can basically have cold storage Chia really easily. You could just 
a thumb drive can be cold storage in Chia. Um, and if you wanted to have like, you know, ways of obfuscating the chain of custody, you, you could probably spin up, uh, multiple wallets and utilize offer files in a way that would create a chain of obfuscation between the origin and the final custody. It's, it kind of depends on how you KYC on the front end, maybe of how you funded the wallet in the first place or any of the wallets that are in the chain. But for instance, like KuCoin, uh, you don't have to KYC on KuCoin and you can have a wallet uh, that has access to a non-KYC expired document represented by an official operating entity bank account that is able to fund a KuCoin account and then purchase Ethereum and or fund uh, that could purchase Ethereum and then with uh, KuCoin and then move it to Tether and swap that for Chia and then move Chia to a never before touched brand new, brand new created Chia wallet, you know? Um, and then from there, you could do an offline offer file. And now whoever is holding this offline offer file and knows who the hell has to get it to have the right recipient hash, you know, recipient wallet, then how are you going to stop that guy from delivering his package? Oh, this is interesting. We definitely need a part two, Orca. This has been awesome. Uh, I, I appreciate you coming on here. And I do yeah. too, bro. You bet. This is awesome. Bet, I, it's exciting. I just I get made Chia clips for like three hours. Yeah, man. I'm going to be doing a Twitter space later if you guys get bored. I know y'all get good sleep. It's only 5.30 though, or 6.30. Yeah, we, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we get good sleep, but 6.30 yeah. is still, still in that hot zone for us. We like. <laughs> I know, dude. It's like, hey, man, it's if you're, if you're winding down, you're winding down. I totally can appreciate oh, that. Nice but yeah, I'm just trying to help people. Nice. I think, you know, you say like, how do you get users? Download the client, take a look at it for five seconds and go, oh, I'm a user now. And this, it's just like, easy. Whether it, whether it's on here or if you're open to doing a separate like thing, like doing yeah, yeah. something where like you kind of like walk me through the process of actually doing that and having that you be bet. a file a thing that's online where we can point people to, but also yeah. like tremendously valuable for me, but that's like a tiny bit compared. Those to are the things that's, that's kind of why I was cool with coming on the show because those are the things Chia needs right now. Most of their tutorials are like how to build a 180 terabyte JBOD closet mine farming. It's like, what, dude? Can you slow down? And they're on Linux and they're like, open up your command line prompt and then you're just going to query your server. And I'm like, yeah, bro, like, like, <laughs> I'm like, man, like all the, all the little green things. Tell me where to plug in the like, power. Like, you're just <laughs> like, so it's intense. You're like, this guy's a genius. I don't know what to do. Yeah, dude. It's like, well, my MVME SSD. And I'm like, listen, dude. I'm not in algebra right now. Like you got to use letters that equal words. They can't just be letters all the time. Like you're using nothing but letters, man. Like <laughs> bring back the words, but yeah, well, it's, it's guys, a lot. but I think you guys would do a great job of showing people like that. There's fun user experience to be had guys, at a very normal level. I think the human consciousness wants more information right now. Anyway, they're, they're going from like being, the, they're starting to not fall for the propaganda. Some of the guys, and they want to just talk about details, just like I do. I know if I'm like this, then other people have to be like this. Cause I'm not like, think about it, man. A year ago, we began talking about like learning in the bear market. Yeah, it's just so like, if you're watching the show right now, what have you been doing for a year? Have you learned anything or are you still just chanting like five or six shelling points? Cause there's a lot <laughs> I've been paying attention no, no, all year. Man. A I'm a lot. Everyone's calling me a schizophrenic on Twitter. I'm now a schizophrenic and Mark, everybody's a jumping on. Of course he's a schizophrenic. I'm like, of dude, course. it's gross. <laughs> People get gross. And like, I've been gross before, but that's why I'll stay anon and stuff is because you should never have to feel like a human said that shit, a cookie monster. Who's probably like ODing on heroin behind his screen. Like who cares what that guy thinks, but the, the fucking stuff that people say, the vitriol that people say is like it, one, it's obviously useless and probably more projection than it is anything, but it's so unfortunate because they can just go do anything else. 
Like just leave, just go do anything else. Why, if you are giving someone the free real estate to live inside of your head all day, every day, and you can't make it through 24 hours without a quip about somebody, then they own you, man. Then they are your master. I like to think I, I'm hitting critical mass. I like to think I'm, I'm hitting <laughs> that's, critical mass. It's someone, it's you know what it is, man? I've, that's what I I've identified myself. it across. Like, I've identified it across communities. It's delusional if you're getting- better. It's none of that, man. It's none of that. It's, <laughs> it is vitriol in replacement of education. I don't want to learn. I, I figured it out. I actually have the answer to the universe. I don't need any more help. And if you're saying things at me, near me, around me, that aren't the things that I have figured out as the answer to the universe, then I will attack you. Because otherwise, it might expose the reality that there's room for discussion and there's room for variation and for alteration. And, and they that's might really have to like, oh, I got to get uncomfortable again. They might have to look in the mirror and ask themselves, am I having the relationship with my wife that I think I want to be having? <laughs> no, no, seriously. They, if There's you start a lot. Questioning yeah. one thing, you have to question everything. And then you start looking in the mirror. Yeah, and then I just you don't start know looking in the mirror and you say, wait, what am I doing? Like, I what spend what like all of the free time I have. I'm constantly learning from people that are way better than I am in the space. <laughs> constantly trying to like just be first in line for the next nugget of knowledge i just don't have time to talk shit if i'm gonna talk shit it's gonna be to people that deserve it centralized entities that are like co-opting the narrative of crypto to turn it into exactly the opposite of what it deserves to be i'll find an opportunity to say some nasty stuff to those people because they deserve it <laughs> but they deserve it big time but the people who are just out here people. grinding and talking DeFi, and let's be honest like even my chia knowledge tonight because my brain's foggy i'm gonna have to go and read it again and like we we got to do this it's repetition we get the reps in over and over and over and that's how we get that juice to finally stick. yeah man that's how you finally get it to stick there so when people are like oh i listen to him because he's smart it's like yeah but you know why you don't see me because i'm listening to someone i think is smart and i'm probably listening to them say the same damn thing i've heard him say a couple times but i just it's like this time it finally the bridge was connected and it made sense it internalized and i'm moving forward like you need to have that sponge like learning it's not an instant progress bar it's saturation of raindrops slowly filling up that soft sponge until you're soaking with knowledge yes yeah. it's a it's a uh, and, and we'll wrap up with this it's when when i think about research and i think about a mosaic right you have a picture of whatever it might be and if you zoom in more, the picture is these tiny pieces of glass, we'll say, right? And each piece of glass is coming from a different source. One's coming from a wine bottle. One's coming from a peanut butter jar. One's coming from something else, right? And you have all these tiny little pieces of glass that are put together that paint this big picture of, of reality, right? And when you think about research, when you think about learning, when you think about all of this, it's these tiny little bits of pieces. And maybe there was a giant wine bottle that was like in there and there's 50,000 pieces of that in that mural of a million, right? And it has a slightly bigger influence on there because that's who you are paying attention to. But each one of those pieces is a little bit nugget of information yep. that you've pulled from all different parts of your life, all different areas of your life. So the more you can go through and think about approaching things from a curiosity standpoint, to learn from the people around you, to open your mind and perspective to other points of view, you'll just be in a much, much, much better place in the future. And uh, with that, we'll take us out of here with some DeFi proof. Peace. You already know what time it is. Crypt in the morning. Crypt in the morning. Crypt in the morning. Waiting on phone. Crypt in the morning. Tuned in. Got me some hex and I'm making a state. Got me some hedge and I'm making it rain. Give me some maxi and that's just in case. Jim Renner sent me to show you the way.